Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. It's retro computer time again. Not that retro. We're talking about uh, 2006, 2007 vintage Sony Veo. And look at this thing. Um, it's a pocket, well, it's a portable computer. Sony's idea of what people wanted in a portable computer in 2006. Um, Intel x86 architecture. Uh, so it is actually a PC. It's got Bluetooth, wireless LAN, and it's got a uh, dual camera on it. The Sony Motion Eye on there, front and back like this. It's got speaker and you can do all sorts of whiz-bang stuff. Headphones, external mic, everything else and this pretty horrid slide out qwerty keyboard the feel on this is just awful <laughs> um uh, thank you very much to chris for sending this into the previous mailbag segment obviously it's uh, seen better days with the screen there so it doesn't work i've got a button missing up here it's all cracked around here and well let's see what this puppy has to offer shall we it's the UX series, and this is the UX 280p, VGN-UX 280p for those playing long at home. It's got the Sony Memory Stick Pro, the choice of champions back then. <laughs> is anyone still using the Sony Memory Stick anymore? Anyway, it's got a capture button for the camera, and it got a pretty terrible uh, battery life of only a couple of hours, Chris said, and really it was, you know, 2000 Dollars up to two and a half thousand dollars, something like that. It just completely missed the mark and it flopped. Nobody wanted a PC in this kind of form factor. And you know, you just gotta <laughs> think about the design meeting where they came up with this and what people wanted. I don't know, maybe they hired some focus groups or something like that. And yeah, this is the result. Anyway, you know what we say here on the EV blog don't turn it on. Oh. Take it apart. Wrong screwdriver. Hang on. Maybe one of those. Yeah? No? Probably uh, we might need a little teeny top ones. There we go. Don't turn it on. Take it apart. We've got one USB port on here and look at this. Looks like we have a SIM. Wow, look at that. It had everything. 64K smart chip. Singular. I've got no idea. Is that a service provider in the US or wherever Chris is from? Um, I don't know. Hmm. So this is what's known as an ultra micro portable computer and well, yeah, I don't recall anyone ever actually using one. It ran uh, Windows XP and, uh, you know, it probably did okay but you were limited by the tiny little pissant screen on the thing and the really horribly, probably not very usable, uh, QWERTY keyboard. Anyway, let's try and take this apart. Does it have the usual Sony arrows on there? Hmm. Anyway, we'll find out. Well, we just had four screws there. Don't tell me it's that easy. It is that easy. We're in like Flynn. Check it out. All we've got is one cable going up here. What's that? That is, that could be for an antenna. I'd be assuming because that feels like a coaxy type cable and we've got the uh, got the built-in hard drive now this uh, newfangled solid state rubbish to Shiba thank you very much and that's a 40 gig 4200 rpm drive and that's just going to come out presumably that was uh, upgradable so any ah uh, we'll undo that but yeah we're going to see lots of tight integration inside this thing no doubt and we can see lots of tons of flat flex ribbon going everywhere already so Oh, there's our mic down in there. Is that in it? Yeah, it's got a little rubber. No, oh, it just, what? It like it's been chopped. What the? What on earth? Anyway, yep, that's been chopped. Um, It does have a rubber surround on it, which just uh, stops uh, vibration coming through when you're holding it and stuff like that uh, coming through to the mic. That's always a nice touch, but you'd expect to see that. I am not sure what this is going to. This little flat flex here is just flapping around in the breeze and it doesn't seem to mate up with anything on there. So what's doing there? Look, I just tried to take out the hard drive bracket there and I'll tell you what, this whole thing, everything looks very, very modular. That's obviously our uh, Wi-Fi module there. And well, yeah, there goes the uh, antenna 
No, there's our Wi-Fi antenna cable up there. So we've got uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, of course, but it looks like this whole, whole lot just might lift out. It's going to be very, very modular, but it's tightly packed. Nice fit to envelope design, that's for sure. Nothing wasted. And they've got a rubber surround on the hard drive here, stopping the uh, noise and vibration there. So that's a, that's a real nice touch and also impact because you're going to drop you're going to end up dropping this thing it uh so you want to take that out absolutely but uh yeah there we go it's going to flip out oh we're in like flynn there's our intel is that our processor and we've got a fan inside this thing i wonder if this was noisy that's a real shame to have a fan inside like a micro pc like this couldn't they have just engineered it a bit thermally a bit better and got the heat out I mean you hold the thing you could you know, dissipate have an aluminium back or something like that but yeah fan that's just a uh, it's a complete cop out I don't yeah thumbs down apparently the hard drive is dead or is just Paul dead I don't know hmm so this Wi-Fi module connects to via those flat flexors up under there, I should just be able to, in theory, pull those off. I'm, <laughs> this is not going back together. So, if it does it come out? How does that? Oh, it slides out. There we go. <laughs> it slides in like that. Trap for young players. So, yeah, that's all very nice. And there's the wireless module. It's an Intel Pro Wireless 3945 for those playing long at home. I tell you what, someone's had a crack at this hard drive. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Turns out that is not our processor, that's the I.O. controller, that's the Intel ICH7U series. Now that does pretty much everything the processor doesn't do. It does USB, IDE, audio, the flash interface, the PCI, clock, power management, you name it, it's in there. That, for all the world, looks like a magnesium alloy frame, so that's very nice attention to detail. Ah, I thought this was really interesting to begin with. I thought, oh, look, they've got this USB connector surface mount, and they just put it in there, and they're just relying on the pressure of the pads to hold down the USB. But no, it's actually been, the pads have been ripped off, and that wasn't me. Hmm. And they've got some customy expansion type header, probably going to some docky type thing down in there, and you flip that away, and... Bingo, there's our uh, power circuitry, dead giveaway with the big ass inductors there, the tantalum caps and everything else, so that'll be generating the five or half a dozen different rails we need for this silly thing. And sure enough, this whole thing does actually flip out if I uh, get rid of that ribbon cable there. Just a few things tying it in. I've got a ribbon cable down on the bottom, down in there. It's... Uh, there we go, where, there we go. Look, that all comes apart brilliantly. It's a fantastic modular design. There's our fan. Okay, so that was coming out the bottom there. There's our uh, grill down there. So that's a little squirrel cage fan. And look, we've got ourselves a copper heat pipe coming over here from, and our processor is almost certainly under there. That's the thing that's getting hot. I mean, that's why they didn't get much battery life out of this thing. It was running too hot. Technology wasn't good enough. And, well, yeah, only got a few hours use because it just got too hot. you got to get the power out. In a micro PC? Nah, poor choice. So you've got to ask, were they limited by the processor technology at the time, or did they try and push it too hard and get too much performance out of this micro PC? I don't know. You know, were their hands tied? Okay, we have to put this in this micro PC form package. We have to put the fan in, and we need this amount of cooling and everything else. Anyway, they haven't wasted a huge amount of space in there, so that is uh, very nice indeed. And if we flip this puppy up, ah... There's all our memory. Bingo. Down in there. What brand? Nanya. So there's our GSM phone module. There's our SIM socket right there. And then we've got a Sony uh, Ericsson EE52 uh, phone module. And I guess that answered the question, where does that little... What was on the back here? That's the antenna. That's the GSM antenna right in there. And it looks like they had an external GSM antenna connector there, is it? Strange looking.
Actually, if you take the cover off there, that coax is just going up, yeah, to that external connector there. So, where is the, where's Wally? Where's the regular GSM antenna? Hmm. So you can go and decode those DRAM numbers if you want, but that's going to be, yeah, I believe this model was one gig. So that's just enough to run Windows XP on a device like this. It, yeah, it'll work. All right, let's lift up this and get a look at our processor. There it is. We have another big, whoop. Yep, we had a little thermal pad on the bottom of there. That just connects down to that baby down there. Don't know what that is, but there's our little copper. Is that going to, yep, that's going to pop off. Let's remove that. And we're in like Flynn. There we go. There's our copper pads. That's not paste on the bottom of there. They got themselves a big thermal pad. Look at that. That's actually quite thick. So, yeah, that's going to have a bit of loss in that. Anyway, does the business. Here we go. Let me show you a close up. Okay, it's quite difficult to get the number on this one, so excuse me, but uh, I've had a look at it under the Mantis, and it is, this is the 945GM uh, Express chipset. So this is the memory controller. No surprises that it's right next to the memory here. And uh, graphics as well. It's not fancy-pansy graphics. It'll do VGA and, you know, meh, not much else, really. So it's designed for mobile devices like this. But, yeah, um, that's it's a bigger die than... The processor, look at that. The physical die itself, bigger. And there's nothing on the die there, but if you look up uh, LE80538, you actually get a um, Celeron M215, but it's not that. But if you actually go to the Intel website and do a search for LE80538, you get what matches this one, the U1500. Or it's actually, if you look at the wiki page for this uh, Sony product, then you actually... Uh, this model is supposed to be the U1400 at uh, 1.2 gig, but it's obviously the U1500, so I don't know, they upgraded or Wiki's wrong. <gasps> Wikipedia could be wrong. <sighs> anyway, 1.3 gig, it's nothing special. It's designed for, you know, <laughs> mobile devices like this. It's got a pass mark if you're into that sort of thing, a 327, and meh. You know, it, it's good enough for the job in here, but obviously not low enough power to get away without that heatsink and audio there for those playing along at home. Not too fussed about that, but uh, that's pretty much all she wrote. Looks like we've got some uh, a core power supply stuff happening around here for the processor, but for this main board, that's basically it. So we've got the processor... Uh, graphics and memory controller, main system memory. We've got our uh, I.O. controller over here. What's this puppy? Did we look at that? I can't remember. Well, that's a real surprise. That's a Renesis uh, H8S Series 2 triple one 16-bit micro. What's it doing there? As sort of like some syst uh, system glue processor miscellaneous stuff. I don't... I wouldn't have expected to find another 16-bit micro on there. That is fascinating. Hmm, any guesses? And that one tucked away in there is a Texas Instruments PCI 8412. It's a card bus uh, controller. And that ICL 9 LPR 321, not exactly sure. Couldn't pull up anything that at first... Uh, Suck of the sav, but um, yeah, if I can, I'll pull something up. But by the looks of it, there's our crystal. Uh, look, we've got uh, uh, termination resistors coming off here. So I would say that is some sort of uh, clock driver, clock gen. Wow, this module here, I swear I didn't do anything. I <laughs> it has, has that. Like, what? what the? What's going on? What on earth is going on there? It's there is no connector. What? Huh? Anyway, you guess what that is? That's the uh, Bluetooth controller, the UGP uh, Z6 there. Um, but <laughs> how's it connect? I'm. This is bizarre. Under that plastic cover there, there's our antenna for you antenna aficionados. Here you go. Isn't that a Bobby Dazzler? Ooh, nice and symmetrical.
So now I've separated the screen from there, and uh, there's nothing much else doing in there. Eh, who cares what's going on there? We've got our uh, Sony memory stick uh, interface. Eh, nothing much doing down there for the Bluetooth interface, and that would just be going over to the lousy keypad on there. Actually, the keyboard might be interesting. Look at this. Ta-da! There's our tactile domes. There we go. And we've got some LEDs to light up. Do we? Looks like it. But yeah, they're pretty wimpy tactile domes. I mean, this thing basically has almost no tactile feedback. It's it's pretty horrible. You can ah, oh, it it was it's it's better when you when you don't have this on it and you can actually get your finger right around the key like that. They should have actually had it like that because when you put this on. It, it, it's like your finger hits the surround and it, it just feels like there's nothing there. You take that away and it's actually a half reasonable tactile response. For those who don't know how they manufacture these, they actually just put the pads down on there and you get the tactile domes embedded in there like that, the little uh, snap domes. You get them from companies like uh, Snaptron, for example, uh, make uh, really good ones. But uh, yeah, it just sticks over the front like that. Easy peasy. Now I've actually uh, looked into these um, for how small they can actually make the pitch between these. And I think I was trying for five millimeter pitch or, or I don't know, it was something, some ridiculously small uh, pitch for my uh, Mark II scientific calculator watch. And I went to the manufacturers of these uh, tactile dome membrane uh, overlays and they were just going, nope nope too small a pitch and yeah that's like bleeding edge stuff and things like that so yeah if i had the luxury to have one this wide geez i would look at that that's that's pretty jazzy i like that and this is where the mechanical engineers have to come in again to develop this sliding mechanism which hopefully comes off oh i did take the screws off i swear there's some screws embedded under there but uh yeah, there's a lot of disciplines of engineering which go into <laughs> developing this thing overall, let alone just the display module. It'll come out somehow. Oh, screws on the side, I think. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. Well, kinda. Sharp. There you go. Sony didn't uh, roll their own there. They uh, are Sharp are one of the leaders in uh, LCDs, so they obviously developed uh, the controller and of course that would be a sharp LCD as well. You can see the, oh I like the little snaky flex going off there, isn't that cute? Um, we'll flip that up and move that out. But you can see the uh, hot bar attachment there, classic hot bar uh, technique going over to the flat flex. They'd have uh, chip on board, uh, chip on flex uh, drivers here for the actual uh, LCD itself. And there's our speaker and one of those uh, fingerprinty readers, is it? They were they're pretty crusty, but yeah, anyway, gimmick. And they've got one camera there on that board, and then they have another board here, which board to board interconnect goes to our second camera on the, uh, yeah, that's the back. One or more of US patents. Well, yeah, that looks like more than one to me. And that's a sharp display model number for those playing along at home. And it looks like they've really stuck that board down with some uh, double-sided tape. That is really, they've gone to town on that. Anyway, there's nothing more to see there. As I said, there would be um, chip on uh, flex drivers under there for the, uh, rows and the columns and I don't know what resolution screen that is. So there you have it. That's a look inside the uh, Sony UX280P or VGN UX280P micro PC from uh, about 2006-2007 vintage and I believe it was pretty much a flop. I stand to be uh, corrected but if you had uh, one of these and you thought it was the duck's guts or if you're still using one let us know. Anyway, um, I hope you can appreciate the amount of engineering that goes into this thing. I mean, it's not just electronics designers, you know, designing the circuits, laying out the boards, everything else, just the 
fit to envelope mechanical engineering design that went into this. There was very little wasted space. The systems engineering and everything else involved in this thing, the thermal engineering, we've got, uh, you know, the uh, graphics and the mechanical displays and the keyboards and the slidey screen and the whole kit and caboodle. Um, that, it's just incredible amount of engineering. It must have taken a lot of uh, different discipline teams to work on something like this and get it going. And how you would actually start off designing something like this, my guess is that when they come up with the shape uh, concept like this and then they would go, right, yeah, this is what we want. We want ourselves a sliding screen and we want the keyboard. We want it to be able to hold it like this so you can use your thumbs like this and the screen slides up and we want Wi-Fi and we want Bluetooth and we want GSM and we want this processor and we want this and that and hard drive and all sorts of, uh, you know, requirements would come out of that. And then the system designers are going to go, right, scratch your head, right, how do we fit in this? Well, let's start with our baseboard like this, but our processor takes too much power, so we need to engineer a thermal solution for it. And then that's got to fit inside. We need a battery. What our, What is our battery solution going to be like? That would be the one of the first things that could change during the design process. They could go, oh, look, we, uh, we were really good at fitting everything in and we've got more space. So let's put in a bigger battery, for example, or something like that. So that could have changed or it could have gone, we need more. Maybe they wanted a bigger battery and then uh, the systems designers went, no, we don't have enough room because you bloody gave us this processor and we need to put in this thermal solution and we need to do this and you wanted all this sort of jazz we don't have the room you're gonna to have to make the battery smaller and that could have you know rather than sc sc throw their hands up and scrap the project and go ah oh, no this isn't gonna work they just go okay let's do a smaller battery we'll just change the specs for the battery life who cares if it's not good enough and people aren't happy with it whatever there's so many design decisions that go into producing something like this and it is absolutely phenomenal. So my hat's off to the design team. I love these um, Sony teardowns. They do systems engineering really, really well. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and all that sort of jazz and discuss down below. Catch you next time. Hi, welcome to a hopefully short teardown of this uh, Sony E-mount lens here. This is from my next uh, 5T camera. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look. Hey, whoa. Hoo -hoo. Yep, there we go. Hey, it's rotating. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Wobbling the camera a little bit and, and look, I'll actually pick it up and start shaking it around. And there you go. You can see the steady shot.